Hi, I'm William Sheckel with the Chambers Rescue Channel, and today we're going to talk about how to set up your Chambers Model C. The first thing we're going to do is the broiler. You lift the broiler up, and there are multiple parts that need to go in there. First one is the drip pan. Put this all the way in the back so that when you lift up the broiling pan, when you've been cooking in it, any spills that uh, would get caught in the back and end up causing rust in the, in, in the back corner where it's harder to clean, get caught in the pan, pull it off every now and then, wash it out, and your drips are taken care of. Then there's the broiling pan. You see it has these notches on the bottom. This well goes in the front. And it sits right in there. Lower it, stays in place, doesn't slip, shouldn't rattle. The next part is the griddle. The griddle has a little hook that catches on right here. If your griddle wobbles at all once it's installed, these screws can all be screwed out so that it sits nice and tight and doesn't wobble from side to side or back to back. Now you take your griddle, see the hook, you're gonna line it up right here. I should point out that you notice mine has some, uh, uh, it you know, isn't perfectly shiny. That's normal. These were made to season. They're made to actually blacken over time. It's rather difficult to keep them shiny if they're in regular use. You have to wipe them down every single time you use the stove, which is just a pain. I know some people who do that. Personally, I'm not that person, but there's a solution that Chambers came up with, and I'll show you that in just a sec. First though, you want to line up the hook, push it in so it's nice and tight, close it, and it's nice and solid. Something like this bothers you. There are multiple different kinds of griddle covers. There's the original Chambers um, uh, griddle cover that is now being reproduced. Uh, you can find them online. They're being produced to, reproduced to the exact original spec. I haven't seen them. I heard they're really good though. The other solution that's period to the piece is the Aristomat. <coughs> the Aristomat originally had asbestos in the back and a little hook. That made it made sure that when you put it down, it wasn't quite as hot when you, you were using the broiler. Because it was exposed to asbestos, you'll see many that are like this where it's been removed. Regretfully, that also meant that the hook that kept the, the cover in place when you lifted the the broiler up is no longer present but it's nice and shiny if you're cooking take it off let this get dirty it's dirty it's seasoned it's going to blacken over time anyway put this down and it's a nice neat addition to your chrome top the next thing you want to do is put the burner in place the burner really is one of three parts that give you your flame the first is this jet right here that's where the gas comes out there's a flash tube that connects the flame at the pilot to the gas coming out of the jet and the burner itself. Now, if you've got a Model C at home, you'll probably not have these burners. This is a Model D burner for whatever reason, and we'll never know why. Our Chamber C came with Model D burners on them. Since the, since the original owner is no longer with us, I can't ask her what happened, but don't be surprised that yours are going to look a little different. The process though is exactly the same. Hold the, hold the flash tube up. You're going to align two parts of the burner. One is this hole that goes right in, that, that jet fits right into. And the other is this tab on the bottom that fits into the hole in the support. Holding the flash tube up so it doesn't get stuck underneath the burner, you slide it into the jet and just wiggle it until it fits nice and tight. You feel that tab go into the hole and you put the flash tube down so that the tip of it seats into the hole in the burner. So the flash tube's going and fitting right in that hole right there. The jet's poking in the hole there and the tab fits into the support right here. And you do that for the other two as well.
Once you've taken care of putting the burners in place, now it's time for the drip rings and the burner grates. Put the drip ring down. Now there are two types of burner grates on a Model C. I have one with tabs that fit into these cutouts on the chrome top. So you just put the tab into the cutout and it fits perfectly. You don't need to worry about the placement of the drip ring uh, because the tabs don't go, don't go through them, they go into the top. If you've got the kind of burner grate that has the little pins that stick out, they will only fit in holes that are inside this ring. You're gonna end up turning this around until the holes align perfectly and then drop in your burner grate. It's a little bit of a pain, but that's the way some of them are. Some of them are this way. What you've got to do depends on what you've got. Do it for the others as well. The next thing you want to do is install your thermowell burner. The thermowell burner has a hole on one end and that fits into a jet that you can see if you look through the, the front right burner. That jet down there is the thermowell jet. If you've never done this before and you're, you want to be absolutely sure everything's lined up right, Install that front right burner last so that you can see, but it really just slips right in. Again, there are two tabs on the bottom to make sure it locks into place properly. And you can see, if you look down around the pilot, see that little circle in the middle that has two holes in it. They lock, these tabs log right, right into those holes so that your burner won't slip. All you do is you bend in, poke it through the hole, make sure those two tabs sit nice and tight so that that's not wobbling and you're all set with that. Now it's time to light the pilots. There are two standing pilots on a chamber C, one in the thermo well, one for the stove top. The broiler and the oven are always match lit unless you have a, an aftermarket standing pilot system installed. This is all original, this doesn't have it. So we're, we need to light the thermal well pilot. We take one of these grill lighters, just touch it down. Same thing here at the, for the stove. If you look right in there, you can see that pilot in the center. Light that. If you can't see it because your light is bright and just put your hand over it, you feel the heat, you know it's there. We'll talk more about adjusting the pilots in a different video. Right now, I'm ju I just want to show you how to put everything together. Now that you've got the pilots lit, you put your thermo well grate in, has a bottom and a top, top is raised up a little. Put it down on those tabs you see on the side. It just rests there, and then you take your thermo well lid and put it on top, and you're all done. Now for the stovetop pilot, you've got our chrome wagon wheel. I've actually seen debates whether it's supposed to go straight or whether it's supposed to go a diagonal. I will say this, this is your stove and you can have it aligned however you want it to be, whatever makes you happy. The important part is you're going to be really happy with your chamber stove all set up. So now let's take a look at the, the lower parts of the stove. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install the burner back into the oven and the oven floor. So you open that up, you need to put the burner in. Now the burner you'll notice has these tabs in the back and similar tabs in the front. And just like everything else, it has a hole for the, the jet to fit in so that gas can enter the burner. These tabs though, correspond to that tab in the back of the oven, as well as those two in the front. Okay, when we get our burner in, the first thing we want to do as we angle it in is fit it into that hole on the side of the oven. That's how we make sure that the jet is right in. I'm going to 
would be angling it up a little. So that you catch the lip in the front and the lip in the back. Now if we look, see it is resting above the bottom floor, right by the pilot. The burner is going through the hole on the side and it is also resting comfortably, we can't quite see it, on the lip behind the damper plate. Next we need to put the bottom of the oven in. It sits immediately above the burner. It has two tabs in the back and two tabs in the front. You notice they just slide along that, by, that bottom runner. Put it all the way in. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat. And if, you're, if you've done it right, you'll just see the edge of the flash tube poking out. That's where you're going to light the oven. Then of course you put the racks in. And you're done with the oven. The only thing left to do really is make sure that your gas connection is, is correct, that that gas line's nice and flat because you're going to put your pantry shelf in place. Again, there's a lip all the way in the back. Make sure it's resting on that so that it, close, so that it gets in just at the lip of the door. Now all the things like your idle hour cookbook, your thermo well pots, any other accessories you want to keep handy are in here and you're done. And that's really all there is to it. I know it's a lot of steps, but they're all very simple and there's nothing here that requires any real technical knowledge. It just requires going step by step and not forgetting where that little uh, drip pan goes. Everybody seems to forget that that even exists and sometimes your stove doesn't even have it. Once you've taken care of all these steps, you're ready to go and enjoy your chambers.